uh, music is kind of getting a little funky, so I'm just going to take care of that right now. But thank you for joining us as we start off another week of live broadcasting here on 1590 WARV and also on Facebook at newhopecc.tv. Click Facebook, and we're glad to have you with us today. Looking forward to uh, a good program because we like to bring you the truth of God's Word every day. It's so important. You know what it does? It gives us stability in life. The greatest thing that we can learn is God's Word. It gives us a frame of reference. It gives us something to think with. It's divine wisdom, wisdom that only comes from God. So we're glad that you're with us today. Today we're going to look at a strange place for a miracle. You know, sometimes miracles happen in the strangest places. And maybe it's a place you expect, and maybe it's a place that uh, you don't expect. But either way, it's a miracle nonetheless. And we're going to take a look as we go through the life of Jesus, through the Gospel of John. We find that a lot of the stories in the Gospels are very similar to our own lives. That we could actually put our name there and say, ooh, that could be my story as well. And uh, sometimes we find ourselves in a place in life like the guy we're going to see today. Not very joyful. Not very joyful at all. It's a place where there's no control. Have you ever been in a place like that? You have no control over the situation whatsoever. None at all. It's not a good place we like to be, is it? It's a place where we can border on living maybe like in no hope or very little hope all of our lives. That is definitely not a place we want to be. And yet, a lot of people, I think, live there. I think it's very common for people all over the world to live in a place where they feel like their hope has run out. It's just not there anymore. It's just not what it used to be. It's a very common situation. We're going to see a man today in John chapter 5 who lived in this very place. But you know what happened? He received something in a way that he never expected. And that's what's so cool about living with Jesus and walking with Jesus. Things happen that you might necessarily not even expect to happen. You know that? So we're going to take a look. We're in John chapter 5. I call this a strange place for a miracle. That's what I call it. Okay? So... Verse 2 opens up and it says that there is in Jerusalem by the Sheep Gate a pool, which is called in Hebrew Bethesda, having five porches. Now notice that this pool we're going to see was a very popular pool. And this is why. Around this pool lay a multitude of those people who were sick, they were blind, they were lame, they were withered, and they were waiting for the moving of the waters. Because here's what they believed, that an angel of the Lord went down at certain seasons into the pool, and he stirred up the water. And whoever then first, after the stirring up of the water, stepped in, was made well from whatever disease with which he was afflicted. Now. That little portion of the story is very debatable. Some people call it a myth or a legend or a superstition. Some say it's really in the Word of God. I'm going to leave that up to you. But the point that we want to make today is God is aware of the afflictions of people. That's the point today. God is aware of the afflictions of of people. You know, it's been said that below the pool was a subterranean stream that bubbled up every once in a while and stirred up the waters. And that's why the people believed rather than water coming up, they believed an angel came down <clears throat> and he brought some kind of healing power to the water. Now, we would call this a superstition. This kind of belief was common in the ancient world. And you know what? There's a lot of common superstitions even in our modern world today. People believe then and even today 
that demons were everywhere, that they inhabited trees and rivers, hills, streams and pools. In Africa, superstitions abound. Amulets are used to ward off evil spirits. They're also used to bring harm to other people. And even highly educated people believe in amulets. You might be familiar a little bit with voodoo. Voodoo is still practiced today. Here we are in the 21st century, and people still practice voodoo. It's a superstition. What is voodoo? It's a religion of West African origin, but it's practiced chiefly in Haiti and other Caribbean countries, and it's based on animism, magic, even elements of Roman Catholic ritual. And it's characterized by a belief in a supreme God and a large pantheon of local deities, deified ancestors, and saints who communicate with believers in dreams, in trances, and even ritual possessions. They're, they're, they're possessed by these spirits of the ancestors. So we would look at that and say, man, those are some pretty serious superstitions. Just like the one in Jesus' day, where they believed an angel came down and stirred up the water and brought healing power. First guy in, boom, he was healed. Now, just in case you modern-minded folks smile at these primitive beliefs, did you ever consider the lucky horseshoe? Friday the 13th? What do you do when a black cat crosses your path? Or when you found a four-leaf clover? Those are superstitions, aren't they? Who in our listening audience ever said something with their fingers crossed? Or when you see a stepladder that's up, do you walk under it or do you walk around? Have you ever pulled a wishbone from a chicken and made a wish? And what do you do with that birthday cake before you eat it? Oh, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. So all of a sudden, you go back 2,000 years and you think about a belief of an angel stirring up water. It doesn't seem that weird anymore when you think about the modern superstitions that are still around today. So anyway, there was a guy at the pool. He had been ill for 38 years. 38 years. And Jesus came by the pool one day, and he saw him lying there. And Jesus knew that he had already been there a long time in that condition. And he said to the man, do you wish to get well? I like what one writer said, that those long in affliction may comfort themselves that God keeps account of how long. And isn't that true? That's what I said earlier. God is not unaware of your affliction. He's very aware. So notice the question that Jesus asked the man. Do you wish to get well? And you know, the man really didn't answer the question. You know what he said? He said, Sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. While I'm coming down, another one steps right over me. So he didn't really answer. It was like a yes or no question. Do you want to get well? They're like, yes or no. But he's kind of like making excuses as to why his life's not changing. You know people that do that? They make excuses as to why their life doesn't change. You know, Jesus was always the friend of the friendless, the helper of the one that had no earthly help. And you know what Jesus didn't do? He didn't lecture him. He didn't judge his superstition, and he didn't even condemn the crowd for not helping the man. He just asked him if he wanted to be cured. That's all. And I think that's because we have to acknowledge that we need to be cured first. Maybe God wants us to hear it. You know, it's like salvation. You can't be saved unless you know you need to be saved. There's a lot of folks in the world today they're not experiencing eternal life. You know why? They don't think they need it. They don't have a Savior. You know why? They don't think they need a Savior. So with this man, Jesus wants to hear him. He wants to hear him say, Yes, I want to be made well. 
Yes, I'm sick. I'm in a bad place. I need help. See, do we really want to change life? That's the question today. People can get used to their problems. And you know what they do? They just live in them. They settle for a life of no hope. And they stay there. And they live there. Let me tell you something. That is not the plan of God. People accept their condition. And you know what happens? They get used to it. So they never bother to try to improve it. They're in a bad situation and they get used to it. So they just stay there. And they think, well, I guess this is my lot in life. Really? You really think it is? You know what Jesus said to the man? He said, get up. Pick up your little mat and stop walking. Immediately the man became well, picked up his little mat, and started to walk. And it was on the Sabbath day. See, the man did what Jesus said, and you know what? It worked. It worked. I think that's the point here. He did what the Lord told him to do, and bango, it worked. Imagine how many things would be better in our lives if we also did what Jesus said to do. He tells us to do a lot of things. I don't know if we do them. I know he tells me to do a lot of things. I don't even know if I do them all. I don't know. Probably I don't. But I'll tell you what, the areas of my life where I do what he says, those are better off areas. And I know the areas of my life where I don't do what he says, those areas still struggle. There's still problems there. Because he's always got, oh boy, here it comes. He's always got the right solution for the right situation. He does. He's always got the right solution for the right situation. Here's what you got to do. You got to do two things. You got to, number one, bring it to him. And number two, do what he says. Now, a lot of times we don't like what he says. I know I don't. Oh, Lord, no, man, no, I don't, I don't want to do that. You want it, want it to be better? You got to do it. Oh, I don't know. Okay. And he leaves us. Now, that guy could have like, Jesus says, get up and pick up your bed and walk. God could have been like, oh, no, man, I don't think so. Nah, I don't want to look like a fool. I can't get up. I haven't walked in 38 years. I don't think I can start now. But he listened to the Lord and it worked. So let me ask you, what area of your life could use some serious improvement? What area of your life do you think the Lord's got something to say to you that could make you better off in that situation? Is it something personal? Something about you? How about something relational? Maybe you and another person. How about something spiritual between you and God? Or maybe financial. Maybe he's got some divine wisdom for your financial situation. Or maybe it's vocational. See, our lives are made up of many compartments. But God's got something to say to each and every one. And if there's a compartment of your life that's struggling, I'll tell you what. The Lord's got something to say about that. And if you listen... And if you apply what he says, you're going to see some changes. Some things are really going to change for the better. So what do you think God's word would say about that? You gotta, that's why you've got to be in a place to hear his word. You've got to be in church. Or you've got to read his word. Because how else, how else do you hear the Lord speak if you're not utilizing what he provides for his speaking? which is the church or Christian broadcasting like right now or his word. That's where you get your marching orders from the Lord to make those improvements in any area of your life. Are you willing to do what he says? I believe this is where the healing lies in our obedience. Obedience follows trust. Trust follows hearing. So I hear him, I trust what he says is true, and then I do it. And you know what? Things will change.
So we can make this story very personal today. You can put your name where it says, put your name was there who had been ill for 38 years. And when Jesus saw you lying there, and he knew that you had already been a long time in that condition, he said to you, do you want to go get well? What would be your answer? What would you say to Jesus? Would you make an excuse? Well, you know, I don't have enough friends. I don't have enough money. I don't have a good job. I, or would it be like yes or no? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, I want to get well. Or no, I'm kind of used to this. I've kind of given into the fact that I'm going to be like this all the time. See, our answer lies with us. But Jesus is like, listen, if you want to get well, I can help you. If you don't, then I'm going to move on to somebody else. But if you really want to get well, I'm the one to help you. Because we have a God who cares for us. He intervenes when no one else does. Hey, we find ourselves in circumstances where no one else can help. Why? Because God wants to step in. We can even blame people. How come nobody's helping me? Because God wants to step in. We can point the finger at others and call them uncaring. But in reality, God wants to step in. This guy had nobody to bring him down into the pool. Why? So Jesus could do something for him. I believe that there are things in our lives that God wants to do. But if we're always relying on people, we're kind of edging God out. No, God, I got this. I got, see, I'm relying on people to get this done for me. And the Lord's like, you know what? I'd like you to start relying on me. I'd like you to put your trust in me and your faith in me. Because when you do that, you know what happens? I'm glorified. And I get to demonstrate my power, oh boy, on your behalf. Are you kidding? There's like nothing better than God demonstrating His power on your behalf. Doesn't get much better than that. Why? Because He cares for us like no one else can. He exhibits His power when no one else has any. People are very limited in their power and in their ability. Even in their compassion, they're limited. You might think, how come no one has compassion? Because maybe they're all hurting. So many people are hurting today. They're not even thinking of others. For 38 years, this man's life had become a way of life. He was used to it. He had no hope of ever being healed. He had no way to help himself. Didn't even seem to have a desire to get better. And then something happened that day. God stepped in. God stepped in. Maybe God is waiting to step into your life today. But you've got to make room. Make room for God. He'll step in. You can triumph over your own hurt, over your own loss, your own pain. How do you do that? Let God in. He's our healer. And when God heals your situation, you'll find yourself being able now to help others and theirs. See, this guy was surrounded by people that needed healings too. They couldn't help him. They all needed help. And we have to realize that there are times in our life when God sets it up where he wants to be the deliverer. He wants to be the one. Sometimes we get our eyes on people way too much. And we have high expectations of people. The Bible tells us, man, don't trust in people. They'll do you the, they might do their best, but they're very limited. We are limited beings. And we can only do so much. And there are things in our lives that only God can do, and we have to be people that go to Him. You have to learn to go to God on your own. Meet Christ. And work it out with him. 
and stop looking at others and stop blaming other people? Because once we stop blaming other people, you know what we do? We take away our own accountability. That's what we do. We make everybody else accountable to us, but we take away our own accountability. We do that. God has to have a place in our lives. He has to have, oh, here it comes, the place, the most important place. Hey, think of it like this. If you only see God, you'll never see people. Say, what does that mean? If you only see God, you're not going to be disappointed by people. You're not going to be let down by people. Why? Because you get your eyes on the Lord. You're looking to Him. You know, you're looking to Him for what you need. And you're not looking to people. People will help you as much as they can, but they're going to let you down. I can help people as much as I can, but ultimately, I will let them down. Because I'm a human. I got my own issues. I got my own limitations. But God has no limitations. God has no issues. He is a friend of the friendless. He is a helper to those that have no help. And you see, here's the thing. you got to get to know him this way. I mean, even Christians today sometimes can be a disappointment. Do you really know God that way? Maybe you're leaning on the church too much. Where well, you should be leaning on God. Maybe you're leaning on the government too much, where you should be leaning on God. Maybe you're leaning on your family too much, where you should be leaning on God. You know, there are so many places that we can just set up as like a crutch. And I'm not saying we don't need those, but they're not going to be perfect for us. They won't be perfect. Because wherever there are people, there are faults. The church is full of faulty people. The government is full of faulty people. Your family is full of faulty people. Your friends are faulty people. We all have faults. We all have limitations. So we've got to learn to meet Christ. Meet him. And when he asks you the question, do you want to get well? Listen, it's a yes or no. It's not, well, you don't know my husband. You don't know my wife. You don't know my boss. You don't know what my neighbor did to me. It's yes or no. Do you want to get well? Then get with God. Three things to do, you'll get well. Number one, listen to what he says. Number two, trust in what he says. Number three, abide in what he says. Do it. Things are going to change. They'll change for the better. Things are going to happen. They really will. See how simple it is? Man, we make it simple here on New Hope Radio. Doesn't need to be deep. Doesn't need to be confusion. confusing. Three simple things to bring change. Listen, trust, and do. That's it. It's that simple. And God's Word is full of wisdom. That's why, oh, tomorrow night... I'm telling you, I can't wait for Wednesday night. Survey through the Old Testament. We have a study guide available, and I don't have it with me, or I'd hold it up for the Facebook crowd. But you can stream the service. I really encourage you. Stream. If you can't get to New Hope in Swansea, maybe Wednesday nights you can't get out, or you live far away, like a lot of our Facebook friends. Stream the service at 7 o'clock, and you're going to learn some wonderful things and the Old Testament is going to come together for you. And we're going to see how it leads to the New Testament. And then we're going to do a survey of the New Testament. And you're going to get so grounded in these teachings. And you know what I've discovered through putting all of this together? How much more I've gotten to know God in a personal way. It didn't, it didn't end up being all academics. Ended up, it ended up being real personal. As you go through the weeks, 
as we go through week one, week two, week three, week four, week five, God is going to become so personal. And we're actually going to see his heart revealed in human history. Human history is God's tool to reveal himself. And we're just going to draw so much closer to God. I can't encourage you enough. We'll be on Facebook and YouTube Wednesday night beginning at 7. Get a study guide. And uh, I'm not going to have notes online for this. Too complicated. But you can get the guide. Or if you just want to sit and watch, that's okay too. But the guide is really, really helpful. At least if you're not, not going to have a guide, um, get a notebook. Write down what's important. If you call us here at the church, I'll mail you one. 508-324-4500. We're making them available for $4 or best offer. But if you don't have any cash, we'll send it to you for free. And we'll even pay for the mailing. How's that? Because we want you to grow. We want you to know God. We want you to be able to be the kind of a person that, number one, hears God. Number two, trusts God. And number three, does what God says. And then you'll find the changes in your life that you're looking for. Man, tell you what, join us Wednesday night. Tomorrow, who says there's no such thing as a free lunch? There's a free lunch in the Bible. Jesus gave it. And we'll find out why and what that's all about tomorrow, 1230, right here on New Hope Radio. Join us. We'll be in John chapter 6. Maybe you want to read the chapter ahead of time. Get prepared. But uh, take these things seriously. Listen, trust, and abide. It'll make all the difference in the world. See you tomorrow.